Hey, how's it going there, folks? Welcome back here to another update. Welcome back to this Wednesday night update. It is the Earthmaster here. March 6, 2024. It's about 11.20 p.m. here, California time. And uh, latest activity looks like some uh, earthquake activity down in SoCal with a 1.3 there in the green flag. Also some movement stirring up there in Alaska, it looks like here in the last hour or so. So let's start off here in the West Coast, Southern California area. There's some of that uh, more recent earthquake activity down there. Outside uh, of the Mexicali area, uh, just off of, uh, I believe that's the southern end of the San Jacinto Fault Zone, or maybe, uh, actually it looks like it's on one of these shear faults, but uh, nothing big, no major swarming going on down there for now across the southern portion of the state, uh, which is good news. Uh, a little bit of activity stirring up here off the creeping segment of the San Andreas Fault and uh, Northern California here. A handful of earthquakes, but really, all in all, uh, just been kind of a typical day out here in California in terms of earthquake movement. Uh, up into the Seattle area, getting a handful of earthquakes here in a linear fashion. That is just off of the Seattle Fault. That uh, zone is there, uh, definitely capable of producing some large damaging earthquakes. The latest one, a 3.0 here near the Miramont area of Washington, about 9 kilometers deep here into this area. Uh, prior to that, we've seen a handful of smaller earthquakes there in the last 24 hours. So keep an eye on this area. Definitely looks like things may be stirring up out there. Uh, over here across the um, Olympic Mountains here. Is that Queets, Washington, it looks like? 2.6, 23 kilometers deep. Uh, that's probably associated there with the uh, Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, also, one little earthquake at Mount Rainier and one lonesome earthquake there at Mount St. Helens. No major activity to report there. In fact, uh, look at that, an earthquake at each volcano. What's going on there? That's a little odd. But uh, nothing major stirring up there for now. Uh, there's that earthquake from earlier this morning, just after midnight my time there from uh, uh, a little earthquake out there in the uh, Pacific. Uh, let me check out the trimmer map here tonight. Go over here to the trimmer, see what's going on here for trimmer activity. Not a whole lot. Only 24 epicenters of trimmer there um looks like just around the oregon area nothing big this continues the trend of uh very quiet conditions in, in terms of trimmer uptick there's just not a whole lot going on there uh in terms of that uh, activity across the uh mountains here of idaho and into wyoming yellowstone had a little bit of swarming going on here today with about 20 earthquakes i did just check that uh yellowstone graph off uh, uh out let me double check that here and see what is going on uh, there's some of that earthquake activity they said they say about 20 and that's probably close to it not often do you see um, you know the usgs put all of the uh, small little microquakes on here but they're pretty close there's maybe a maybe another five or so more they didn't add but that earthquake swarm looks like it has died down it was centered over this area here around the holmes hill area north junction region and uh, you can see it right there on the map Nothing big uh, coming in down there about uh, seven to eh, seven to eight kilometers or so uh, underneath the area. And of course, the movement over here across Idaho as well. A um, bunch of twos and some ones, but for now, no major earthquake activity to report. Up in Washington, outside uh, the Lincoln area, a couple smaller quakes, about 13 kilometers deep underneath this area. Not. Uh, not too bad. Not not a whole lot of earthquake activity happening up there. Uh, out in Texas and Oklahoma, well, a handful of smaller quakes here as well. Not really seen anything major uh, happen in here for now. Uh, look at the global model here. It looks like we got some newer activity here around Japan with a 4.3. This area is the region that's seen that, uh, well, that 7-pointer back on the first of the year. So still seeing a little bit of aftershock activity there. Uh, the Kurokama Chaka up here, this is, uh, I believe that's from last night, right? Uh, 4.2. I take that back. That's just from, uh, that's from today. Oh, goodness. All right. So that was just about an hour or so ago. It looks like things may be straining up here. Uh, that's, this here is off of the plate boundary. This here is super deep into the subduction zone of the Kurokama Chaka. That's, uh, uh, 379 kilometers deep there for that 4.2. So keep an eye upstream here. I know it's been awfully quiet here over the last couple days, but it looks like things may be starting to pop up here and uh, get active. Uh, typical clustering going on here about the Philippines southward there where we did see some uh, activity in a cluster with uh, some fours and fives stirring up here this afternoon and early evening. 
Uh, so a handful of earthquakes here across this area. This region has seen quite a bit here recently. Um, but it's almost always moving. I mean, it's, you know, they could be leading to something bigger. Maybe not. It might just be a, uh, the typical earthquake activity that they see out there, which is, uh, similar to that. 5.1 down in the Indonesia islands area. Uh, looks like we're seeing, um, well, there was some older movement here across the Solomon islands region here eastward around the Tonga. New Zealand really hasn't it uh, doesn't look like they've seen any newer activity here recently. These are all older quakes. Uh, some newer movement down in Australia. Looks like a 3.1 coming in fairly recent here in the last couple hours. Uh, the rest the rest of the globe here uh, looks like we're toning down slightly here across that swarming area around Greece. I'm really not seeing a whole lot of earthquake activity here on the globe. Um, but still broad regional, uh, uptick. It looks like, kind of looks like that's happening here. Uh, but as far as that specific swarm area around the, uh, Ionian region, I'm not really seeing too much activity stirring up out there, but, uh, a handful of earthquakes out there today, twos and threes. The Atlantic ocean doesn't look like there's uh, much activity stirring up out there at all. In the South America region here, a handful of deep quakes there into the center portion of the Peru Chile trench. Some fours and whatnot stirring up out here. Um, that's going to be this little cluster right here. Deeper quakes, uh, below 100 kilometers deep there. Out uh, in the Pacific, the Hawaii area, uh, looks like there's one earthquake here around the Kilauea volcano. Very shallow earthquake. Uh, aside from that, I was just checking the seismograph stations out here. There's not a whole lot of uptick going on here. Uh, this is one of the stations around the summit area. As you can see, last 12 hours, only a handful of smaller quakes there across the area of Kilauea Volcano. And the tilt meter, really nothing drastic going on. These are just typical readings here of inflation, followed by uh, minimal deflation. And that's just, I'm not really seeing anything out of the ordinary uh, in terms of suspicious activity for now. Um, up in Iceland, let's see what's going on up here real quick. Um, and... Um, yeah, not a whole lot here either. Goodness, 15 earthquakes in the last 12 hours. Uh, down around the Grindavik area, not a whole lot. Most of that activity listed on the map here is just scattered out and about. So, um, yeah, just kind of a, a dull moment right now uh, in terms of earthquake activity and volcanic activity. But that could be a good thing. Maybe not. Uh, let's see what we got here for solar weather activity. Space weather activity. It looks like we did have a little sea flare, a really sharp, impulsive sea flare right here. Let's pull this up real quick and see what we got. Uh, there we go. little sharp sea flare. Almost made it into the M flare category. Uh, looks like a C8.3 coming from... Um, let's see here. This was put out uh, earlier. I'm guessing it maybe came from this region right here, 3599, which is the one I've been kind of watching, this area right here. Um, we can find that here on the movie from the uh, SDO page. Got a pretty decent movie um, layout here of the sun, of course, in rapid <laughs> rotation. So we'll watch for a sea flare. I'm guessing it's coming from this area right about here. Watch for this. Okay, so i seen something over here kind of uh, pop a little bit. I'm wondering if it was that. Let me see here. I didn't really see anything major coming from this area, but over here there was a, a pretty good flash. Oh, maybe over here. Look at that. See, it kind of had some reaction here and then uh, also had a, another uh, event over here. So when this thing uh, stirs up, it can definitely... Um, create some uh, neat disturbances elsewhere on the sun. All right, let's see what we got here for the magnetogram image. See what we can find out. This this little area right here definitely looks like it is developing slightly. There's a little bit more dynamic core within that sunspot. That is 3599. The rest of these are just, uh, yeah, not a whole lot to them. So 35, 3599, the culprit... Um, uh, maybe some more sea flare activity right now the sea flare category goodness dropped down about 75 percent 15 percent for m flare and uh well there's not a whole lot of dynamics there for any further stronger flaring 
looks like maybe around the 9th of um, coming up here in a couple days. Might have a G1 class storm. Uh, let's see what's going on here from the Space Weather Prediction Center. Let's see what they're calling for. See if we can find that CME that's supposed to hit us here around the 9th. Here's the sun, the earth in the green. There's that little CME. Just barely, uh, looks like it's barely, barely going to hit us. This is one of those, could be the, could be a, a near miss uh, and, and not even do anything. So that's a little ways further away from the planet. Uh, see, there it is, a little bit closer inspection here. Just barely. I don't think it's going to hit us, but we'll see what happens here as we look forward to the 9th. Uh, aside from that, folks, uh, you know, just typical flaring activity uh, in the low-grade department right now. Uh, current day one outlook is this for um, this is for Thursday. Thursday, folks, got uh, some severe weather out here in the slight category. That's a, a two percent chance for tornado probability across a good portion of Oklahoma, even into Kansas, and right around the center portion there of Dallas, uh, Texas area. Uh, wind and some hail events as well. So just a heads up. Those are going to be uh, some thunderstorms firing up here uh, Associated with the low pressure system and some colder air coming in as we put this into motion here. You can see that uh, uh, Activity kind of stir up right there uh, For tomorrow. It looks like Friday may be in on that as well uh, Out across the West Coast here in California. It looks like maybe we'll have a little bit of precipitation coming back on early next week Monday uh, into Tuesday potentially as well uh, then after that a high pressure kind of sits back in uh, and uh, keeps things a little dry out here across the west coast uh, much colder air coming into the area uh, I want to show you guys the um, the overview of this and we have to back out uh, and see a good portion of this here we're going to check out the northern uh, areas here this covers the states of course um, Let's see here. So this is on, this is a 22nd. That's way in there. So let's start about uh, right about here, right? A lot of the eastern portion of the country been dealing with some warmer temperatures. Well, it's about ready to change. We're going to flip flop here the event uh, after next week, right about, there's some more warmer weather out here, but it's about midweek is when we see a high pressure dominate out here across the west coast. And we'll watch that jet stream kind of form and dip down into the country a center portion of the country with some much cooler air look at that a lot of colder air venturing back down into the center portion of the country including down into texas there uh and that uh, covers a good portion of the country these uh, uh purple bluish colors are indicative of cold uh departures from normal warmer out here across the west coast not looking at any extreme temperatures but uh, definitely it looks like it could warm up here a little bit and then we'll have to just watch after that. But far as the models go, it looks like colder air reinforcing the uh, the region that's already looking at some extreme cold temperatures. So get used to, uh, well, don't get used to the warm weather right now out there across this area of the country. Much colder air coming in as we look into uh, a little bit deeper into March. All right, folks, I'm going to call it a night. Uh, not a whole lot going on here on the seismographs. I'm going to bring back up the Barrett station here what we've got Japan Mount St. Helens Philippines um, Iceland I'm gonna drop Iceland here I can always add that back up when things get interesting but I want to keep New Zealand here in the mix uh, and also of course Southern California the station called Barrett is uh, located down there roughly um, and somewhere around this area right here but uh, yeah Anyway, folks, have a good night. Stay safe out there, and we will catch you guys back here tomorrow morning. We're getting closer to Friday. We've got one more day, and then uh, we should be good. Take care, folks, and stay safe out there. We'll chat you guys tomorrow morning.